Hello, friends and enemies. No reason to worry or buckle at the knees. Who am I? What's my name? Priscilla Poppycock, and it's my game. Ready to slay, I'm painted up. My legs are crossed, and I filled my cup with sassy cues and some wit to gag. My lips are glass, for dishing in drag. Dishing, dishing, dishing in drag. Hold your pearls, Priscilla's in fashion, nipped and tucked and ready for action. Guess galore and games to play, cue spotlight, don't look away. Glitter and lashes on every curve, cinched up tight, I'm ready to serve. The saucy tea to make your tail wag, the curtains up, for dishing in drag. Oh, hello, my kittens! How are you? Oh, we are back! Yes, yes, yes! Oh, I am Priscilla Poppy Cox, and you are watching Dishin' in Drag! Oh, not to be confused with the dog operas coming soon. Oh, there are no po pooches on this show. The only drooling and panting will come from me, because I'm cinched and tucked tighter than a camel's tushy in the sandstorm. Oh, oh, how you have missed me. Oh, we've been on a mid-season hiatus. Oh, hiatus, not a hiatus. That's my other show. Tune in. Oh, I haven't seen you in such a long time. Oh, but we are back to dish. Yes, we are. Oh, and a special thank you to my makeup queens, Chris and Dee, who spent the past hour or so on Zoom with me getting ready. Oh, you are flawless. You are beautiful. And I hope your lashes are still on. Oh, don't worry. We will get this drag going in the area and you will be part of it. I promise. We have a future here, these drag queens in Bangor, Maine. I'm here for you. So reach out. I have no problem sharing my tits with you. Tips. I don't mind sharing my tips. Just remember the tip only. Oh, it is February 15th, the day after Frankenstein's day. I mean, Valentine's Day. Oh, I hope you had a day full of love and chocolate and flowers and teddies, teddy bears, or in my case, a bunch of bears wearing teddies. Oh. <laughs> but in almost all seriousness, they weren't wearing the teddies for very long. Oh. Oh, Valentine's Day, the day when couples remember that they love each other. Oh, they write little poems to each other. Roses are pink, tulips are white. Here are some presents and hopes we don't fight. Oh, oh, it's also the day when single people treat themselves to three boxes of chocolates, two bottles of wine and one intimate bubble bath. Oh, and it's also the day when parents curse construction paper, making countless valentines for people and cooking 17 dozen heart-shaped sugar cookies with red frosting. You know, the dye that covers your fingers and countertops, teeth, clothes, nose, genitals. Red, red everywhere. So you're going to spend the next week trying to explain to everyone that you did not kill anybody. <laughs> Although if Cupid goes missing... Oh, oh, speaking of Valentine's Day, we have a little treat for you all. Yes, we do. The Penobscot Theater streaming right now is the tiniest librarian. So let's take a little peek at this trailer to get you jazzed for it. Oh, she's just so tiny. <laughs>
so cute. Oh, that makes me think of trivia. Here we go, trivia, trivia, trivia. The first question, let's get started with Valentine's on my mind a year ago. What hilarious sexy farce was a hit on the PTC stage a year ago, Valentine's Day? Come on! The first person to put their answer in the comments on Facebook Live gets a prize! Oh! That reminds me, feel free to share this show as many times as you want. Maybe start a watch party. Oh, okay. Let's get on with the show. Today, in our pre-show soak, we have an amazing guest. Yes, that's right. Since 2015, the Maine Science Festival has been a staple in this little community. And although this year has been a bit of a doozy, Kate Dickerson is here to tell us what's happening. Oh, oh where is she? Hello, Priscilla. Oh, hello, hello, hello. Oh, how was your Valentine's Day? It was great because I don't care about it, so I didn't have to do anything. <laughs> how about you? <laughs> oh, it was just a dream. It was. I had about seven bubble baths. Ah! Lovely. <laughs> so I want to know the Maine Science Festival. Can you tell us a little bit about it? Sure. So the whole point of the festival is to celebrate the science that happens in Maine by the people who do it. So what we do is we make scientists rock stars and we let them talk about their work and get you really excited about it. So that's the very general overview of the science festival. And we do that with- Go ahead, sorry. Sorry, go ahead. We usually do it in person, but we can't do it this year in person. Um, so we're doing online forums. So we're doing, it sounds boring, but it's not. You get to learn about rock star scientists right from them uh, in, a, in a format like this. Maybe I should have you host one actually, now that I'm thinking about it. Ooh, that would be fun. I have a lot of science in me. I, I know you do. <laughs> Sorry, I have a lot of scientists in me. It's different. <laughs> so can you tell us about how people can actually get involved right now with the forums? How do they find that? Yeah, so probably the easiest way to do it is to go to our Facebook page. Uh, we've got the information on, of the forums on there. We have one tomorrow at one o'clock. Um, and it's actually our very first international collaboration. We're, uh, we've teamed up with people from the United Kingdom and we're gonna talk about offshore wind because they've been doing offshore wind since I think 2003. And we're gonna talk about what they do and then what we wanna do here and have them talk. And the coolest part I think is that I'm teaming up with this person who's a science diplomat. So we're gonna run the session together. So I didn't even know that was a thing but I'm pretty excited to find out about how this person uses science for diplomacy. Yes, I was gonna say, how do you become a science di diplomat? I don't know, but I wanna know. So I'm, <laughs> I'm gonna find out. <laughs> That's exciting. Everyone should wanna find out. I think so too. So how long will it be going on this season? So we'll have that one in this uh, tomorrow. And then in March, we're gonna do four sessions, one every week of March, and they're all gonna be about COVID-19 because that's the big science story this year. Um, and the first one is gonna be about what the virus is. And then we're gonna talk about how main companies and scientists have stepped up to address COVID. So that'll be the next two weeks. And then the last session is gonna be all about vaccines and public health. So we're gonna bring in some people who can talk about all those different areas and how they relate to Maine. Oh my gosh, it sounds like you really are, I mean, you're part of this community. You want people to take part in this and learn something that will be able to bring back to their community or a knowledge base. And that just sounds amazing. Well, thank you. I hope so. That's that's what we're hoping. I mean, I don't know about everyone else in this world or in the state of Maine, but I watch TV at noon every day just to get my updates. Wow, I'm on Twitter all the time. I wish I was only on once a day. That's pretty good. <laughs> Honey, I'm on more than one time a day. I'm just learning about COVID once a day. <laughs> oh, I am just so honored that you would be here today. Thank you, thank you, thank you for soaking your feet with me. Thanks for having me. I love bubble baths. Oh, have a great night. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Mwah, mwah, mwah. Oh, oh, gosh, that Kate Dickerson. She is just the needs of the bees. <laughs> I love it, I love it, I love it. Oh, 
Okay. Now you can come back anytime you want, Kate, but you just remember we only got three shows after this one. So you better be quick about it. Oh, let's get on with the show, shall we? Tonight, we have a mashup of Honky Tonk Patsy. Yes, that's right. Oh, those of you who loved Honky Tonk Angels, Always Patsy Klein, and Honky Tonk Laundry, you are in for a treat. Yes. And those of you who didn't like those shows, well, you can just look and listen to me. Oh, oh these four women have made themselves a name here in Bangahore, Maine. Oh, first up, she is a powerhouse voice that comes from the Penob. When she, you hear it from the Penobscot Theater stage, you can hear it all the way down in Florida. And she is coming to us from Florida tonight. Oh, yes, she is Patsy Klein herself. Laura Hoda! So what? Hello. Hello. Hello, oh. hello, Priscilla. Hello, Benasca. Hello, hello. I'm so happy to be here. Oh, how I have missed you. Oh, you look simply divine. Thank you. I, you know, when you, when you're hanging out with Priscilla, you make sure that you up your game. You know what I'm saying? Oh, honey, I appreciate it. I just wish poor people would do it too. <laughs> okay, now, before we get those other pedals in here, I have a little question for you. Yes. It's a little, who would you rather, if you know what I mean? And today oh, we're going to play with the one and only Meredith Perry. I'm sure you've heard of her. Ah! One of my Ooh. favorite humans on the planet, that's all. Second to Phil Burns. Burn. And the one, Dominic Varney. Whoa. I don't know well, okay. if you know him, but he is a lot to take. Um, I've he, heard uh, a lot about him, and he, I've heard he's incredible, is all I've, you know, <gasps> just what you hear, you know, along the street. What you read on the bathroom wall, I get it. <laughs> what I wrote on the bathroom wall. <laughs> <laughs> oh, she is dishing. She is dishing, everyone. Okay, so tell me, who would you rather... Dance the twist with, play twister with, or put in a twister. Okay, okay. Let's. This is no one has hard. feelings. It's not a big deal. No one has feelings. Yeah, that's fine. Um, here's the thing. Let's face some facts. I have seen Meredith Perry fold a fitted sheet in less than ten seconds flat. So now I want to see her do the twist. Like that's just that's a given. That's a given. And the, I, you know, Philip Burns is such a brilliant musical director and pianist that I have a feeling that he, he's, I'm sure he's very bendy. So him, you know, him playing Twister with him would probably mean that I would lose. So I'm going to have to put him in the Twister, right? Okay. And who would, I, I mean, what could be more fun than playing Twister with Dominic Varney? I mean, come on. He's, the, he's got that adorable son that I hope would come in and play with us. So I got to vote for that. Oh, that's wonderful. I just feel like it's a new TikTok challenge doing the twist and shout. I feel like we can start it. I love it. I love it. I'm ready for it. Okay. Now, speaking of twisted, <laughs> next up, our second guest. Oh, we have the woman who was just awarded vocalist of the decade in the state of Maine. Yes, that's right. Vocalist of the decade, people in the entire state, all men and women. She won it. And her chaps have been all over the PT Sid stage. Chops. Her acting chops have been all over the PTZ stage. Oh, you got it. Free and Beck is here. Oh! Hey, Priscilla. Welcome, you little sassy singer. Oh, hello. You look gorgeous, and you're wearing my favorite color. Green. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you. You look beautiful as well. I love your background. It's so bright and shiny. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> okay, honey. How was your Valentine's Day? Well, you know, oh, it was great. I have some really sweet friends who surprised me, and um, I'll just leave it at that. I'm just very grateful for good friends. Oh, God, when you, could you send some my way? Because I'm stuck with you people. <laughs> okay, let's have a question for you. Now, since Laura's here, we can throw her in the mix, all right? Ooh, okay. All right. 
So you have Laura, Dominic, and Meredith. Okay. Who do you want to have a banana split with? Oh. Split a banana with? Mm. Or do the splits with? <laughs> okay. Um, I'm going to say... Ooh, I might have stuck would... her, America. Uh, I'll share a banana split with Laura because yeah. I don't get to see her very often. And I feel like a banana split takes a lot of time to eat and we could catch up. Um, what were the other two? <laughs> who do you want to split a banana with? Oh, right. <laughs> and who do you want to do the splits with? It's fairly easy game, Brie. Okay, yeah, I have a short-term memory. <laughs> um, I would like to share a banana with Meredith because I don't get to see her very often right now with this whole COVID thing. So socially distant, we'll split a banana. But you'll and, cut it and uh, throw it at her. <laughs> pretty much. And then I'll do the splits with Dominic because I've heard uh, he's a good time. Oh, mm. I hear he can do a good split too. <laughs> we'll find out. Well, maybe. <gasps> well, I am so glad that you are here. Get ready for this. Our third guest, really. Oh, she is the toast of Bangor. I mean, the toast of Bangor. She is a powerhouse of that stage, but I have to say she is just as fierce and captivating off that stage. Oh, she is a friend and a mother and a teacher and a wife and an advocate. Oh, I treasure this woman almost as much as this whole community does. She's just finished an amazing run on, in PTC's production of Flying Solo, where she brought the digital house down. Welcome, Julie Liznett. Hello. 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 Good to see you, humans. <laughs> oh. Well, I don't know about that, but we're here to talk. <laughs> you you look gorgeous and you're a harbinger of spring with all those beautiful colors. It's a little wishful thinking, Julie. <laughs> well. <laughs> Sorry, I sounded like oh, Paul yeah, right? just now. <laughs> okay, I have a question for you. Are you ready for, oh wait, how was your Valentine's Day? Oh, oh, good, good. I got to spend it with my husband of almost 37 years and my daughter yes we had a lovely day now does your boyfriend know uh shh, uh my husband's right in the other room so <gasps> oh well, i have a question for what you since Brian's here, here we can throw her in the mix now too okay okay, okay. so you have meredith laura and Brian. who okay. do you want to clown around with send a clown to, or who would you buy a clownfish for? <laughs> would I buy a clown what for? You know, if they're a little lonely. What was the last one? <laughs> who do you want to buy a clownfish for? A clownfish for, oh, gotcha, gotcha. Um, I think I would, I would buy a clownfish for Brian. <laughs> Uh, because she loves pets, and uh, I think she'd be a good pet mom. Uh, what were the other two? Oh my gosh, Julie, what's wrong? <laughs> <laughs> I'm old. Who do you want to clown around with, and who uh, do you want to send a clown to? I think I definitely want to clown around with Laura Hodas, because we've clowned around before, and it was nothing but great fun. And uh, because I haven't seen Meredith in a long time, I think I would, I'd definitely send a clown her way just to say hi. <laughs> I just picture Meredith getting a knock on the door and opening up the bathroom and the clown. <laughs> <laughs> Julie! <laughs> oh, well, welcome. I'm so excited to dish with you. Well, thank you for inviting me. Lord, what? There's another guest. Oh my God. Okay, but who is she? She better be good. Yes, 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 yes. We have another guest, everyone. She is a woman with a rock belt that can put Pat Benatar to shame. Tonight is also special because she's, oh, 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 it's her birthday, people. It's her birthday and she is spending it with us. Can you stand it? Oh, it is Heather Asbury Livy. Hello! Hi! <laughs> Oh, I am honored. It is your birthday. It is. It's my birthday. I'm spending it with amazing people. Well, when are they arriving? Uh, they'll be here shortly. 
<laughs> good. So tell me, tell me, tell me, how was your Valentine's Day? Uh, it was good. It was really good. Yep. I get to spend it with my husband and uh, my cat. And actually, we have decided that we're getting new baby kittens this week as my birthday gift. Oh, <laughs> you heard it here first, America. <laughs> Have you, uh, do you, have you met them yet or are you you're going this week? I Zoomed with them and um, I go and get them uh, Thursday and they, their names are Gibson and Marshall. Oh, that's mm -hmm. adorable. Yeah. I'm super excited. Well, let's throw Brian in the mix. Okay. So now your three ladies are Brian, okay. Laura, and Julie. Now, come on. Who would you rather eat a cake with? bake a cake with or throw a cake at easy done i am going to bake a cake with brian because she makes one of my favorite treats every show uh i am going to eat a cake with my mama julie because we have to catch up it's been a little while and i'm throwing anything i got chair cake cat at my oldest friend, Miss Ho Ho. <laughs> <laughs> oh God, I love it! I love it! I love it! Um, now you left us all hanging. What is the treat that Brian always bakes you for every show? Uh, lemon squares. Ooh! Oh, I would look so good with a lemon square tonight. Right? <laughs> it would. Honey, she ain't making me anything. <laughs> <gasps> okay, I am so honored that you are all here tonight. Gosh, look at you ladies. It is like the queens of BTC. Oh, <laughs> oh we always start off with a little something called PTC Patui. And for those of you just tuning in, which <laughs> I'm sorry, but it is a game that we play with our guests where I just mentioned one production that they were part of and they have to say a word or a phrase or a story or a monologue or a song that comes to mind and they have to perform it and I will judge them um and so tonight <laughs> we're gonna start off with our little PTC Patui with Laura down in Florida Laura in Florida ah <laughs> There's no snow Out here. By those kitty cats. I just realized there's three kitty cats next to you. There's like 700. It's amazing. Well, if, some, if Laura goes missing, we know what happened, everyone. <laughs> okay. I hear they eat the eyes first. <laughs> first up, honky tonk laundry. Honky tonk laundry. Oh my gosh. We had so much fun also i love a show where there are only two costumes and you change an intermission number one that is a beautiful and brilliant thing and underappreciated as far as i'm concerned and the second act was pants which was awesome oh no wait the first act had more costumes that's right i yeah. forgot oh, i forgot well only one one costume in the second act and that was outstanding um oh my gosh <laughs> didn't i didn't i fall off a table Heather in that show. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> there, there was that moment. I suppose you need to be more specific, Laura, on which show you fell off the table. Um, so, uh, well, you said honky tonk long. <laughs> Did I fall off a table in the other shows? Those I'm were sure. after those were after the other shows. You <laughs> right, you're right. Not right. Anyone? Not turning Honky anyone? Tonk to laundry. Me? Costumes, costumes, costumes. Jimmy Johannes Meyer. Yes, yes, yes. So freaking fantastic. Oh, that man. So and fantastic. His it was great. Crap. Oh, I mean, what? I'm trying to think of like, I'm trying to think of the songs from that show. And I can only remember Heather's song. So was, like, what, is, what does that say to you? <laughs> oh, no. I had to sing that, that, that Queen of Denial song again in that show. Cleopatra, Queen of Denial. That song came, always seems to always come around. That one and uh, these boots are made for walking. Come, uh, come around in every country show. Before He Cheats was killer. Oh, I did love, oh, with the twirling. <laughs> yeah, never tell yeah. your director, never, never tell your director that you have a secret special talent because he <laughs> will make you do it 
fast to a country song. I loved it. I got to beat the heck out of that laundry cart. That was so much great and aggression release. It was terrific. Oh, so fun. Okay, moving on. Heather. Yes. Rock of Ages. Rock of Ages. Uh, like, kind of like, it's like musical theater candy. I had the most fun performing the show every night, except for the six inch stripper heels that I had to wear and dancing. That was yeah, about it. After wearing them all day and then having to wear them to the theater as well. Same thing, you know, same costume. It was, you know, it was a little rough by 2 a.m. But no, it, you know, and then I had the, the, the heaviest wig I think that we've ever created. And I'm always excited to see whatever outfit I'm, I'm literally poured into. It's always a good time. Good family, clean fun. <laughs> I think I can relate. <laughs> no, I just love, I love the, you singing rock songs, Heather. It's like you're, it's your meat and potatoes, right? It, it's, yeah. I mean, it's, it's so much fun to do it. And then it was for a fact for the audience is, is the only time I've shared the stage in a PTC show with my husband, Tom, who was part of the Arsenal band. That's right. Mm -hmm. Oh, I remember that. Um, I yeah, we'll come, we'll talk more about how awesome you are later after <laughs> the show. Um, next, <laughs> who do we want to talk about? Let's see. Ha Brian. Boeing, Boeing. Oh, um, Italian. I got to speak with an Italian accent. Um, it was super fun. That was such a fun show. Love a farce. I love seeing farces. And that was actually, I think, the first farce I was ever in. And it was a blast. So that much, so much fun. Barry Newport's directing debut, was it not? Yes, that is correct. Yes. And tell us. Italiano. Was that something that came natural? Were you, well, are you, are I mean, I am Italian, but we had a fantastic actor who was in the cast who also was our dialect coach, Dustin Charles, and he is awesome. He taught me how to speak Italian. He taught Jenny Hart how to speak with a German accent. Um, AJ had to speak with a French accent. He was amazing to work with. And yeah, it was really fun. A fun. I, I don't know how to say it's in Italian, but yeah. <laughs> it didn't stick. <laughs> Other things did, but that <laughs> Julie. Yes. Safety net. Oh. That that's a that's a little bit of an emotional one to talk about since we just were opening and <laughs> we pretty much closed due to COVID. Mm. Um but it was an absolute thrill and I loved, loved, loved playing Heather's mom. I've played mom to two of these ladies, Brian and Heather. And um, who's the better daughter? Oh, no, 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 no. Moms, never, moms <laughs> never tell those things. But uh, what a lot of people may or may not realize is this, this, this lady has pipes and everybody knows that she can sing, but she acted her butt off without singing a tune in safety net and it was amazing it was i i always say i got to see the final performance before all this went down i saw the preview yeah. and i was floored by her um yeah. amy raider was great um but heather was good too um i'm just kidding heather was so good <laughs> Oh, she was so good. I'm just so glad that we were able to do a digital way of it so people yeah. get to see it. Honestly, you all. That's how I got to see it. Oh. I felt like a cool kid. <laughs> Truly. You paved the way for what theaters were doing at, at that time. So congrats to you. You were part of an amazing experience. Well, and, and who knew that it was going to be, you know, going on as long as it is. And it's wonderful that, that theaters are finding a way to, to survive and thrive. Oh, so we'll get back to you. I'm excited to ask you a question about playing their mom later. Okay. <laughs> okay. Laura, we're going back to you. 
Now, Patsy Cline, always <sighs> Patsy Cline. Had you, okay, I'll let you go. And then I have a question. Well, ask the question so I know what to answer. Well, other than you, say, so, were, so when you're given the role of Patsy Cline, were you a huge fan of Patsy Cline or were you the actor that was like, I'm playing this role. I will now spend my entire journey finding every single out thing about her. Or was she already in your favorites list? No, that, uh, the latter. I, I, I knew, obviously I knew who she was. I knew some of her songs, but I didn't know all 27 of her songs that she sings in the show. And uh, it was my very first, and I've now played her three times. And so now like my depth of knowledge is so much deeper and I absolutely love it. I love her. I love, I love the backstory of her. I love what a badass, um what a badass she was I love how she stood up not only for herself but for other people um like people they would go to some crazy honky tonk with her band and be ready to play and people were notorious for not paying the band members and Patsy Cline would be the one you know this was way back when women didn't speak up nearly as much as we do now and she would demand it that everyone be paid or guess what there is no show Mm -hmm. So I just, and that's a, not a lot of story that you hear about her. And for someone, someone who tragically passed away so young, God, she made such a huge impact. It's fantastic. I just love her. I love every, I love everything, all of her songs. I love everything about her. I would do it again in a heartbeat. That's a hint. I heard. Hint. Okay. <laughs> also, let's face it. The first time I... <laughs> So I get to rehearsal and I meet the one and only Julie Arnold Lisnet, who I have heard about like for ages and forever. And I'm so excited to finally be back in Maine because I hadn't been up in years. And we do like, did, did we even do any rehearsal jewelry before you went on vacation for a week? Because <laughs> you did a week of rehearsal before I got there. Yes. And, and then, then I, I got went there. on vacation and then, <laughs> then. You did, yeah. you did that week. And then I came back. I, I remember the, so I was very nervous. I'm not a singer and I don't know why you have me on because one of these things, awesome. one of these things is not like the others. I'm, I'm not a dig at me, honey. I'm the, no, <laughs> I'm the, I'm the old broad in the group here. And mm -hmm. all of these ladies sing like songbirds. Um, but I remember being very nervous because a two person show is intimidating enough. But I remember walking into PTC the first time that I was going to have a, a, a rehearsal with Laura. And I'm thinking, oh my gosh, what if she doesn't like me? What if we don't get along? It's going to be really, really interesting. So I'm coming up the stairs and I hear her before I see her. And I don't, I don't know if this is something that other people do, but you know how all of a sudden you can just tell by hearing someone's voice, oh, they're gonna be cool. This is gonna be, this is gonna work. And then I came around the corner and I saw her back too. So I I like saw the cut of her jib before I saw her face. And I thought, she's cool. I can just tell by her rear end, she's cool. <laughs> Julie, that's how I identify most people in this world. <laughs> but then she she turned around and it was just like, ah, oh, can't wait to work with this lady. We <gasps> had the best time. We had so much fun. Oh my gosh, that's hilarious. Was it Blue Moon of Kentucky? Keep on shining. Well, I did, yes. You're talking yes. about your rear. <laughs> No, I meant that's the song we had to sing together, but also, yes. <laughs> yes. I, I was, like I say, I was absolutely terrified about singing. One thing that she could never do is teach me how to clap on which beat to clap. <laughs> I still don't. It's like, nah, I still don't know. <laughs> as long as you're doing it with that. conviction, Julie, as long as you're doing it with conviction, no one cares. <laughs> I mean, we all talk about, about it, but no one cares. Absolutely. Yeah. Just Except Tommy. Just Tommy probably does. Sorry. <laughs> Tommy no. probably does. <laughs> Okay, Heather, you ready? Yeah. Rocky Horror Show. Oh, just, uh, uh, I think I've told this story before. I didn't know it. I didn't know anything about it. And I was told who I was cast as. And I said, okay. 
And I remember going to the first rehearsal and I sang the song and the director, Nathan, uh, Nathan Halverson was sitting right in front of me. And immediately as I'm singing science fiction, he starts yelling at me. What I thought he was yelling at me, but apparently the audience yells at you. So to me, that was kind of the shock to the system. I'm like, at one point I just stopped singing and I just kind of looked at him like, are you okay? You want me to, st what, am I doing something wrong? And he just went, no, 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 you can't stop. People will be throwing things. They'll be, you know, yelling at you, chant backs. And I'm like, oh, okay, I can get into this because I'll just throw things back. Like, sure, why not? <laughs> um, and I was teamed with uh, Christy Robinson. And uh, I remember yet again, we were in the highest heels that I think literally they had ever created. And we would finally meet up and have to hold hands because we, our ankles would be wobbling after walking down the entire aisle to get to each other. But at that point, the clothes got, you know, thinner, the heels got higher, the wigs got bigger. So that's always a good family show. <laughs> well, that's what I thought about doing this show. I was like, I haven't been here in a little while. All, my, <laughs> all of my dresses seem a little tired than last season. Join the crowd. <laughs> Damn COVID-38. <laughs> okay, Julie. Yes. Flying solo. Oh wow, um, that was that was truly intimidating. Uh, I did not want to say yes to it. Barry was very persuasive. Um, I'm not a writer, and that's the part that terrified me the absolute most. But I am so glad I did it. Um, the teachers were fantastic, and you know everybody has a story. And you might not think that you do, but everybody has a special, at least one really special story inside of them. And, um, you know, with just a little bit of prompting, uh, you, it comes out. The, the, the hardest part was, you know, at first we were just free form kind of writing. And I think I had like, I don't know, 3,500 words. And then they tell you, well, the final product has to be 1,200 words. <laughs> So you chop, 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 and get lean and mean. Mm. <laughs> yes, 2021, lean and mean, let's do it. <laughs> but I just have a question. So um, I'm sure everyone asked, let's, let's just dive in a little bit in the sense like, how did you do it though? You mentioned that they were coaches, but we're all, we can't be in the same room together. So how did you do your piece. We, start, we started classes in September and met once every two weeks and with uh, two, two teachers from out in California. It was all via Zoom. Mm -hmm. uh, there were, were six of us and the two, two teachers in one team. And then there were six uh, in another team with the same two teachers. Yep. And it just, uh, it was really thrilling to just watch everybody develop. Um, from and to think of where their story started and where they ended, it was just to watch them all go on this really incredible journey and really personal, personal stuff that you know you don't think you're going to impart to the world, but then you just end up doing it because the the whole situation, the whole it it just feels safe. Um, the whole way they taught it and and. Uh, you know, brought us along. It just, it just felt safe to do that. Well, your story definitely was moving. And I really feel like it's the one that I remember so strongly right now. Just, I know the other one speaking, but I can honestly remember your entire story. Wonderful job, Julie. Again, you. you blew us away digitally twice. Thank Safety you. net and flying solo. I, I kind of like, I like uh, serious and gut-wrenching things. I mean, I love comedies too, but um, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, Brian. Oliver. <laughs> Oliver. Uh, British. Um, gosh, kids. There were a lot of kids in that show. Um, <laughs> and they're and all so freaking hungry. <laughs> and a dog. There was a dog in that one as well. 
Um, no, it was great. Uh, you know, it was done at the, at the Christmas time and, uh, I got to sing as long as he needs me every night for like a month's run and it was awesome. And that song is just beautiful. And yeah, it just, uh, that was a special, special little show. Oh, and that dog was so smelly. Okay. <laughs> Let's, before we get started, let's do another trivia question because I'm sure everybody wants a present. Heather, you've already had yours. What <laughs> has been your favorite show so far in this PTC season? Comment, comment, comment. Oh, oh. Brian, you mentioned Oliver. We were talking about it. And I remember that Ben Lehman was in that show. I don't know if anybody's heard of him. But he is doing a little something right now for PTC. And I think that we should all just take a sneak peek and see what he's done. Oh, play it. Hi, friends. Do you like using your imagination and learning new things? Well, starting in January, you can join me, Mr. Ben, and all of my friends here in the Playhouse. We'll be learning all about the world of acting and how it can help us in our everyday lives. And best of all, we're gonna have lots of fun. Right, guys? Yeah! <laughs> so visit http colon backslash backslash. Oh, no, no, it's, no, no, it's guys. Forward slash. We don't need all that. And in fact, I think it's right on your screen. Just go to penobscottheater.org for more information. There's no screen on this window. Oh, no, no, no. There's screen at home. Did you say scream? Scream. Ah! See you soon, friends. Oh, it is just a dream, everyone. Now, I know some people here. I know, Have you watched it? Have any of you watched any of the episodes here? I have. Brian. Yes. Brian, I've, seen, I've seen all five episodes. Julie was in one of them. It's great for kids and adults. There is some great adult humor, um, but it's also very safe and, and good for kids. So uh, watch it. Just like dishing and drag. <laughs> 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 Oh, well, we have a special treat for everyone out there watching Dish in a Drag. You are the first to know that Mr. Ben's Playhouse is available right now and streaming, and you can binge all episodes. Go, go, go! Oh, ben, thank you for doing your little playhouse for us. Oh, God. Okay, let's go. We have got done everything other than talk about <laughs> you ladies being in the shows that we love so much. So... Let's talk about it. Why do you think these three shows? Now, I chose you all for a reason, Julie. Okay. Okay. Um, why these three shows were like amazing in our community. Honky Tonk Angels, Honky Tonk Laundry, and Always Patsy Klein. They broke records. People came to see these shows. And my question is, why the hell is that? <laughs> Why do you I, think, do I think it's pretty clear that Mainers in general, but especially Bangor, Maine area, love their country music. And uh, I also think that these three shows show really strong female relationships. And we love seeing that and we need more of them. <laughs> mm -hmm. I like that. Mm -hmm. What about you ladies? What do you feel? I, I, I think, think for, go ahead. No, you take, take it. Um, I, I think as far as uh, always Patsy Klein went, I, I just love the fact that there was, uh, all you know, you got all 27 of these songs, which was fantastic, but there was also just such this wonderful, you know, friendship um, that was, the whole story was told of how these ladies met and became friends and, uh, it just was so interesting uh, to be a part of and to, to learn things about and, and, uh, and see how it developed. Well, I think that's part of that wonderful show is like, if you come to Always Patsy Klein, you kind of have this idea like, oh, I'm just gonna listen to this lady sing Patsy Klein, which is amazing, right? We love Patsy Klein's music, but something about the story, including her friend, all of a sudden we have this amazing story between these amazing women that you leave being like, I didn't realize all of that happened. Yeah. Absolutely. I mean, 
a lot of the vehicle of the story, uh, you know, when Louise tells Patsy's story so Patsy can go backstage <laughs> and change your clothes. <laughs> there was a lot of that. There was a lot of that. There was a lot of that. <laughs> but the, I mean, I mean, when, the, she, when she falls off the table. <laughs> <laughs> but that's true and the great thing about Patsy Klein too is that that's the story between the two of them is is true and it all came from the the letters that they would send back and forth to each other and a lot of it was you know the actual words from the actual letters that they that they pen palled to each other and I think part of the reason that these three shows in particular are um popular is it gives people a, a it gives people a little dose of familiar and a little dose of something new, so it's an it's an easy it's an easy ask for a theater company to to ask of their audience, but it's also an easy choice for an audience to make because as I love a new play and drama and I love all of that too, but the best one of the best things about what Barry Newport has done at PTC is giving us. And actually her whole, like the whole group that's involved with them is giving us such a smorgasbord of wonderful options to choose from. But these three shows in particular give you a little of everything. And I love that. And it's just, and it's just such a joy. And then, you know, the people that she, you know, brings in to do it. <laughs> um, <laughs> are just, it's just, I mean, I've gotten to work with all three, all four of these amazing humans literally right here, right now. And I, I can't even tell you, every time I think about it, it brings a huge smile to my face. It brings me such joy. And I think that did it, it did that for the audience as well. Yes. Heather, what do you think it was about Honky Tonk Laundry that drew people in? I mean, people are into washing their clothes. Right, <laughs> maybe. It's um, something we all can relate to. <laughs> you know what, I think that, um, what I took away from it is that sometimes I want to go to the theater and I want to laugh. Sometimes I want to be engulfed in a dramatic story. Um, Honky Tonk Laundry and Honky Tonk Angels, for that matter, they were, you know, people pin them as, as jukebox musicals, but at the same time, they're, they're familiar, they're comfortable. They're like that, Saturday night sweater that you put on or you know what I mean it's like the blanket that you kind of cuddle up with on the couch it's so familiar it takes you back to when you were a kid or it's a song your grandparents used to sing um I think that me as an actor in them it gave me a chance to work with two of my dearest friends and I've worked with them in different ways but I think I take more special memories with Brie and Laura because of those two shows. But Honky Tonk Laundry, for me, it came at a time where I think people really wanted to just let loose and just relax and sit back and be entertained. And ironically for Laura and I, it wasn't that. I mean, I think in a lot of times, I think she and I were maybe, you know, um, we had things going on in life and we kind of needed each other. And we didn't even know we did until we were cast in the show with our great director, obviously, Mr. Dominic Varney. Um, it was such a close knit group that it was a safe environment. And, and we just, we just thrived. We thrived in that kind of a setting. And then when you let two big bad mouths like us sing, oh dear. Yeah. Especially a yodel, a yodel people. Yodel. There was yodeling. How could I have forgotten uh, the yodeling? I don't know. I'm sitting here doing this. Like, how do you not remember the yodel? Uh, that, the was, that, was of, hor that was horrifying. The horrifying. amount of times we had to rehearse the yodeling was a little insane. It mm -hmm. was, uh, but we got it. We did. We did. Almost, oh. as many, almost as many times as we had to re-choreograph a number in Honky Tonk Angels when I hurt my back, girls. Do you remember that? Oh. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, yep. you can't do the backflips anymore? Not anymore. No, the doctor says I can't do them anymore. But no. uh, thank goodness for Cleopatra, Queen of the, Queen of the Nile, and then the, uh, the uh, clogging number, because <laughs> I would have to get on my eight-foot wig yet again in that show with my heels and not kill myself trying to get to the stage. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for that. <laughs> 
Well, when during my prep today, I was honored to have two queens with me getting makeup on, um, Chris and Dee, and we were talking about what questions um, would they ask you all if they had you in the room. And one they came up with that I hadn't thought about was, um, I wrote it down. Uh, how do you deal with reviews? Do you read them? Do you remember them? Do they affect you? What What is your opinion on that, uh, if you have one? I thought that was a great question. Oh, that's great. Uh, I was thinking about it the, actually not long ago. When you are a, a performer and you're an actor, there's a fine line because you do some for the joy that you bring to yourself. But when you're a performer, you're out there, you're exposed and you are criticized and you're critiqued and you are judged. And I learned really young that um, they have a right to their opinion. They're not wrong that that's their opinion. And I find that I also, I can't appeal to everybody. And I think I'm a pleaser by nature. And so that was probably the hardest thing for me was to not, uh, not to win them over some way. And um, I think that reviews, I've always read them because uh, I think that they may see something I'm not aware of. Now, sometimes the, I, I don't agree with it, but I think that it's healthy to see what people perceived as maybe something you thought you were doing one way. It's no different from you getting notes from a stage manager or a director or uh, an, a fellow actor that you respect. It's just sometimes they, they're not in the room throughout the rehearsal process. Mm -hmm. And I think it's as an actor, it's interesting when you are critiqued on your direction, you're not the one that you're doing what you were told. Exactly. Yeah. So, so th that, that to me is the only thing that you, you kind of take it as it is. I mean, we're all adults and it, it's just like, you know, water off a duck's back. It just rolls off. Um, but I can remember uh, some from 20 or 30 years ago that were not favorable. I still can tell you what they were. You know what I mean? Though that person still like kind of nips at my ear a little bit and it makes me work harder. Oh. I, I, I still remember the one of the... One of the funniest ones I ever got, this was going back to college. Uh, she lent an air of grace and elegance to the stage, but someone needs to teach her how to walk. <laughs> I'm like, what? <laughs> wow. Yeah, I don't know, it was funny. Um, I totally I, agree. I totally did agree. That, did that offend you? Were you like, were you scared to walk? <laughs> well, uh, you know, of course, how you feel about these things at that age in college is vastly different than how I feel about them now. <laughs> uh, I think, I, I mean, I guess thinking back all those years, I, I, I guess I was a, a little offended. <laughs> And yeah, you know, then of course I'm thinking the whole time while I'm walking across the stage, I keep thinking about it. Now, you know. And then you trip and then it gets worse. <laughs> no, that's my job. No, but it, you and know. And then you fall it, off a table and it's all over. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I, t I totally agree with Heather. I mean, you just have to put it in perspective. It's one person's opinion. Uh, yes, of course, we all have egos. We all love to hear praise versus, you know, negativity. Uh, but as I tell my students at UMaine, because I, I teach acting there, you cannot ever read a review and let that affect your performance because that came out of a uh, rehearsal period, working with a director, working with other actors. And so the worst thing that you could possibly do is change what you're doing on stage <laughs> because you hear that critic's voice in your head. No, play the play the way you've been doing it. Mm -hmm. That's wonderful advice. Does anyone I else? can't let anything roll off my back. I am ridiculously sensitive. I try to follow the four agreements, but I take everything personally. So just know that if anyone has ever said anything mean about me, it is still living in the back of my head. You're welcome. Well, just remember, I've Julie loved your tush. I mean, that's, as far as I'm concerned, that's I, the win, right? I still I, do. I, I do. I I try to let I try to 
now I've gotten to the point where I try to let, I, I still embrace the good ones. And I'm like, yes, that's that what they said was true. And the bad ones now I'm just like, they're just wrong. They're just wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Very selective. <laughs> Well, Dishin and Drag has not been reviewed yet, so I think I'm safe to say it's never going to be reviewed. I don't know. I gave it the five stars. Did it not? Did yes. my five star rating not come through? I hope they're five diamond stars. Well, that would only be sensible. <laughs> so I, I hinted at this, but oh, sorry, Breen, do you have anything to add? Uh, I was just going to say the show that I was in with Julie actually. Uh, not such a favorable review for my performance and it bugged me but as she said I was directed in a way I rehearsed in a way I wasn't going to stop doing that what I have to do also is counterbalance that with the kind words I hear from people that isn't expected I got an email actually while we were doing Honky Tonk Angels that I have I printed off uh, and have held on to because it meant so much to me. It was someone who was an acquaintance, but you know, we don't talk on a regular basis. And it just meant so much to me that I, my performance moved him to write me a private email and that he enjoyed the show so much. And so it's, it's important that. to keep that balance, you know? Words Otherwise of... you'll just be a depressed actor and who wants that? <laughs> no, I think that's such an amazing story and wonderful words and words are heavy. And we as, um, you know, our art is going to be judged. That's kind of what we do. But like, I always think about our peers and our actors and the friends that we have that are in the business. It's up to us to, to reach out and support them and send them love and show them support because we know the opposite. Right. And I, I just hope that goes out to the world where people are watching right now and there are thespians and we have to support each other in every single way. And um, you, reviews are scary, right? But our peer, our peer reviews should be respected and loved. So um, I hinted at this question earlier, Julie, I mean, yeah, Julie, what you played a mom twice for these ladies. Now I don't want to know who you spanked the most, but <laughs> emotionally like what is it like to play a mom when you are a mom is it difficult do you just fall into a role like that um how do you how do you create that character well it, i'm it's funny because i'm i played moms even before i became a mom um you know you're an actor so you should be able to do these things I, I, obviously becoming a mom in real life definitely has has brought a lot more to the table uh I truly do when I play somebody's mom and it was very easy with Brian and, and Heather because they're just wonderful people. I, I, I truly uh, feel like the person is my, my kid. Um, that, and, but, and that goes, you know, you were just saying that we all need to support each other and that's absolutely true. But that's the, that to me is the wonderful thing about theater is for the most part, 98% of everybody that you're going to work with are truly great people. And it's a joy and a privilege to come to rehearsal and work with people. And it, it's, uh, I, I love playing nurturing parts like that. Um, I had so much fun with both those shows, even though one was a comedy with Brian and the other one, uh, you know, was, was serious with, with Heather. Um, the bonds just really felt very real and, um, still feel them now. I mean, when I, we talk privately and, and you know, message back and forth, it's always, they always go, hi, mom, you know, <laughs> <laughs> hi daughter. Um, you're like, I'm not writing you a check. I love it. <laughs> I don't know, with the amount of times that you've had me over to dinner at your house, uh, to be fair, even though you weren't my mom in the show, I still feel like you mommed me beautifully. Well, thank you. <laughs> well, we wouldn't be thespians if we didn't have the question, what show are you dying to do? As soon as we are open in the theaters, what are you doing? Directing or acting? What is the one that's on your list that you need to get in your bones? Uh, uh, well, I'm going to be directing Twelfth Night at UMaine. Congratulations! And thank you. It's it, it's going to be interesting. I, I'm used to directing outside. I do Shakespeare outside, you know, in the summertime, both acting and directing. But we're going to do this in 
well, towards the end of April. <laughs> so pray that it's an early dry spring and we don't get snowed on. <laughs> but yeah. <laughs> well, that's exciting. Congratulations. I love it. Uh, you know, after all of this, uh, this COVID crap, I want to do something that is like off the wall, like, uh, like a Mel Brooks, Young Frankenstein, mm -hmm. just to, you know, say, here's the bird, you know, COVID, now we're going to live it up, laugh and just roll in it. <laughs> so it. I Let's... definitely, I just, I definitely want to do something like along that lines, just like, here you are. <laughs> Let's put on the Ritz, honey. Let's put on the Ritz. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> what about you, Laura? What are you itching to get into you? What do you do want to do? Uh, are... You know, I, I just keep thinking about all of the all of the shows that were supposed to be done that have now been like I was supposed to be doing Henry the Fifth with Orlando Shakes. Oh. And I'm like, I just can we can we just can I just go back and do like we uh, I we opened you're in town on Friday the thirteenth and closed it the same day. We never got to go back. So we had one performance and I'm like, can we do that again? And there's a show that I've been booked for that they've now moved twice, which is Book of Merman, which I'm very excited about. And I just have my fingers crossed that it'll happen. I was supposed to go to the mountains of North Carolina to ensemble stage to do beer for breakfast. And I'm like, I just want all the shows that we were supposed to do like all of the deferred dreams, I want them all to happen. And I want them all to happen for all of us. And I just, I just hope that that is going to be true. And that we're, you know, that everyone who loves theater just continues to support it enough to get us through this time so that we can't, we can all sit back in the theater and breathe that sigh of relief and enjoy that communal feeling. I just want all of those things to still happen. Well, before I move on from you, can you tell us quickly, how can people find out what you're doing? Because you are streaming and performing from Florida right now. So is there something they can find online to get their Laura Hodos fix? Absolutely. If they go to, uh, I have a, I have an actor page uh, on Facebook, since you're already on Facebook watching this right now. And if you go to facebook.com slash Laura Hodes actor, uh, you'll find me. I have yeah. a streaming, I have a cabaret streaming called uh, right now, I think for one more week. And it's called A Show Must Go On. I was up at the Hippodrome in Gainesville, Florida, and we were about to film The Revolutionist when suddenly there was a slight, a slight catastrophe. Everyone's fine. But we had to delay the filming till May. And the artistic director said, Laura, can you do a cabaret show in six days? And of course, <laughs> I said, of course I can. Yes. So in six days, put together a new cabaret called A Show Must Go On because it must. And mm -hmm. I subtitled it A Hip hip beret because it's hippodrome theater uh we, and it's so much fun uh so that is happening and that's pinned to the top of my laura hodis actor page on facebook so you can whoop, still whoop. see that yes and Brian, what show is it tell me what do you want to do well i was really looking forward to doing nine to five uh and getting to sing with heather and christy i think i'd still like to do that um but again, also my dream right now is waitress. Uh, we could always change it to curbside and make it pandemic related somehow. I'll wear a face Perfect. shield. Perfect. <laughs> Just throwing that out there. And instead of pies, instead of pies, we're making lemon squares. <laughs> yes. I have a, I have a, I mean, I've never had these lemon squares. I don't know why Brian doesn't love me. I just, I'm, you know, when I say I like- Wait, the, Honey, like the there is a the list of reasons which I have been accumulating. So I'll just- Got it, got it. To you, okay? Makes total sense. Makes total sense. <laughs> oh, thank you all for joining me. This time went by so quickly. So I am so grateful that I got to see your beautiful faces today. Um, please, please, please be well and be safe, ladies. I love you tons. Before we go on, I have one question for you because it's the last trivia question to everyone who's still watching. <laughs> is anybody watching? Um, what is your favorite local business in the Bangor area? Comment on Facebook and win a prize. Ladies, do you have an answer? Go. Oh, I, I for some reason, the name of it has just gone out of my head, but you know that the cute little, um, Tea place right in the square next to the Chuck. Oh. Oh no, that face. Yep. Um. West Market. What is the West name? West Market. 
Yes, thank you. West Market Square, coffee, tea. They have my favorite. Um, I still order it because it's the, they're my favorite uh, decaf hazelnut black tea. It's amazing. If you haven't had it, go in there and tell them I told you to get it because it's so fantastic. Happy Hi. endings. Happy endings. Happy <laughs> Julie, what's your favorite downtown Bangor? Oh, gosh. Uh, I think the Briar Patch. Oh. Even though, even though my kid is grown up, I still just love all the books and the. They've got so much great stuff in there. Brian? I miss oh, going too many to book. mention, but going off the books thing, 98 Wake and Shake is found in the lobby of the Bangor Library, and they make amazing wraps and, and breakfast sandwiches, and you should go there. Oh, God, happy endings and wake and shake. It's like my Friday night. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Thank you for joining the show tonight. Thank you, Kate, from the Maine Science Festival. You can still take part, everyone. Get involved. Oh, my ladies, there are not enough words to show you how much you all mean to me. And the Penobscot Theater and this community, you have the ability to bring people together. And tonight is no different. I can't wait to see you all in person. Thank you. Thank you, Kristen D, for playing with me before the show tonight. Please share our little show if you get a chance on Facebook. Next week, we have a little mini reunion, and it's a show we've all been talking about through Dishing and Drag. It's a year with Frog and Toad. The entire cast is going to be with us. Christy, Rebecca, Hans, and Ben. Oh, we're going to go down the li lily pad to lily pad down memory lane. Oh, be still my fart. My heart, be still my heart. Remember, you wear your masks, stay six feet away, schedule your vaccine, and please... Save a little love for yourself. Don't you dare give it all away. Bye! Hello, friends and enemies. No reason to worry or fucking listen me. Who am I? What's my name? Priscilla Poppycock, and it's my game. Ready to slay, I'm painted up. My legs are crossed and I filled my cup with sassy cues and some wits to gag. My lips are glass, addition and drag. Addition, addition. Dishing in drag. Hold your pearls, Priscilla's in fashion, nipped and tucked and ready for action. Guess galore and games to play. Q spotlight, don't look away. Glitter and lashes on every curve. Cinched up tight, I'm ready to serve. The saucy tea to make your tail wag. The curtains up, but dishing in drag.